It is looking more and more unlikely now that the September 10 debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris will go ahead. The Republican presidential candidate took to his Truth Social platform to accuse ABC News, the network hosting the debate, of being biased in favour of Harris. Joining me live is former White House Chief of Staff and now Bondi Partners consultant Mick Mulvaney. Mick, uh, great to see you. Look, I would say that... The rules have changed on Donald Trump, and he says the rules should be the same as the first one. The fact that he's complaining about it so uh, loudly and doing so on true socials, really, I mean, why is he declaring his hand here? He's not. He's he's playing a game. <laughs> he's, he's, he's sort of taunting the other side. Look, we are... We are all the way down at the schoolyard level right now, mm -hmm. um, Laura. So in the, in the last couple of hours, we've heard stories out now that uh, the Harris team wants to make sure that the microphones are turned on all of the time. Keep in mind, back when in that um, debate with Joe Biden six or eight weeks ago, now the microphones very famously were turned off when mm -hmm. the candidate's time expired. Now the Harris team wants those turned on. The Trump team still wants them to be turned off. The Trump team also responded by saying, oh, and by the way, the Kamala Harris team asked that we do this sitting down instead of standing up. So that's literally the things that we're fighting about right now, um, which I think leads us, leads me to the same conclusion that you, ent you opened with, which is I don't think we're going to see one. There's still a chance, really? but I think it's more likely than not that we don't have any presidential debates. No way. So, I mean... <sighs> But what does that, I mean, does Trump just not care and his team just not care? They think by not doing it, it just won't hurt him at all? No, I think it's sort of, I think both sides are sort of on the same page. Kamala Harris is doing very well. Keep in mind, she came out of her convention last week, got a little bit of a bump. There's new polling data out tonight that we might get a chance to talk about that shows her leading in several of the swing states and has a 58% chance likelihood of winning, according to this pollster. And it's a pretty good poll. I've taken a look at it. So if you're winning, you don't want to do a poll, uh, don't want to do a debate. I'm not sure Trump wants to do a debate because I think he sees this as more of a turnout election. He's not trying to influence any undecided voters to the extent there are any at this time. So it's a Look, it's been a bizarre election cycle. How many times have we talked about it? We've never seen anything like this. Mm. Um, and we may well go into November without having a single presidential debate. Yeah, that's uh, quite extraordinary, isn't it? And in this day and age, at uh, the end of 2024, the debates don't matter so much because... In, and I, my caveat is this, because... Very few people will watch the entire thing, but what millions of people will watch is any viral moments or mistakes that come out of uh, those debates. So I don't think either leader would mind if they didn't go ahead, um, but both of them want to present it as if it's out of their hands and the other guy or other woman is making the decision. I find that really interesting. The other thing I find really interesting is... Uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. pulling out of the race, that's not the interesting bit, but supporting uh, Trump. I guess, you know, they're both from a long line of uh, privilege and money. Uh, you know, maybe that's the connection. I have no idea. Look, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. continues to be sort of an enigmatic character in American politics. When he announced this week that he was going to drop out of the race and endorse Donald Trump, he also uh, commented that, oh, and by the way, Donald Trump had offered him the vice president slot uh, in exchange <laughs> for doing that. Uh, even hinting that that meant today and not six weeks ago before J.D. Vance was the president, the vice presidential candidate for the Republican Party. So it just continues to get more and more bizarre. The bottom line is this. The Trump team seems to believe that the Kennedy team was hurting Trump more than it was hurting Harris. And the Kennedy team seems to agree with that. They seem to have come to the conclusion that they were actually going to help Kamala Harris, and they're not interested in doing that. At the end of the day, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. The folks who are voting for mm. Kennedy are probably more likely not to vote than they are to vote for either Kamala Harris or Donald Trump. They were sort of, he was sort of the place where people who didn't like any of the candidates would go to hide or at least go to sort of voice their opposition to the, the way things were going. So it's going to make a news splash. There's no question about it. Yeah. It may count for a handful of votes, but I don't think it uh, changes the outcome at all. A new polling out today. What does that tell us? 
Kamala Harris has had a really, really good six weeks. It's been just bizarre, LJ. I mean, it just has. To, to go from a vice president that not that many people knew with an approval late rating in the low 30s as recently mm -hmm. as six months ago to leading um, nationwide by four or five or more points and even leading in those critical swing states, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, even maybe Arizona by more than the margin of error. It's been just a tremendous a uh, burst of momentum from the Kamala Harris campaign. So look, if the election were today, she would likely win. That doesn't mean the pendulum's not gonna change two or three times between now and November, but she's had an extraordinary four weeks. Um, and it, it, right now the election is hers to lose. Seems like it. Mick Mulvaney, always good to talk to you. We'll check in soon.